Well, it was bound to happen sometime. I uh, had an accident with the last video sometime before it was finished and lost some recording. It wasn't too much. I don't really remember what happened other than uh, maybe some drawing in of waveform or uh, drawing in of automation. Uh, maybe a couple uh, melody fixes. Nothing that anyone will miss for sure. So what I did this morning was I came back and I listened to the entire thing, and now uh, I'm ready to make some more changes. Um, when I was listening back to the introduction here, this uh, intro part, I got the feeling about... You've got this first phrase where we uh, have similar melodic content, but not really the same uh, rhythmic content. And then we've got the uh, next eight bar section where the um, rhythm changes. And I feel like it's too much because we end up with 16 bars really before anything instrumentation wise changes. And when you listen back to it with a fresh pair of ears, it, it's fatiguing. So I think I'm going to bring my cello in earlier but I'm going to have it doing the staccato uh, bit that it was um, doing beforehand um, just to try that out. I'm afraid that it's not going to work just because of this, because it's the same line and we've got to do better than that. That's all there is to it. Um, I think I'll, maybe what I can do is just take this last four bars of this, uh, you know, offhand piano part and use it to, uh, create something. It, it may be time for a new instrument is really what we're coming down to. <laughs> Pathetic. Alright, where's my... Okay, thank you. Alright, so... Yeah, that's... Not really any good. If we stretch those notes out, that'll sound something like. But now that I've introduced it, it feels wrong to take it out. So yeah, I'm going to drop this part all together and just pull this up and do the same exact thing. And that might actually create some diversity between the two uh, violin parts. Might. Pardon me. All right. That's much better. Okay, so yeah, that brings us to the next thing that I wanted to modify. Over here, I created a side chain and sent the piano and the toy piano into it. And that side chain is compressing the wind sound 
bit and I want to change how this works. I'm actually going to remove, how do you do that? Can't say I've ever done it before. How do you get it off of that? Remove uh, route to, I don't want it to go to anywhere. Nope. How do you get it off? Stop! No! I don't want you going there anymore. And this is where you read the manual and say, uh, what do they call that? They call it an output bus, right? Where'd it go? Man, I feel like I'm going crazy this morning. Route to new output bus, okay. Output bus. All right, creating an output bus. It's not what I want. Deleting, it's not really what I want. To delete, select. Yeah, that's not really. Not really what I'm wanting. You can change the output destinations or create new by clicking. All right, so we're out to master section. Hey, hey, dynamite. All right, so with that done, what I'm going to do now is take all the stringed instruments, route them to a new bus. We'll call this one strings. How appropriate. Let's color it orange so that everything matches. And then uh, what are we going to do with this? We're going to route this into sidechain bus, I think. Where'd it go? Route to sidechain bus. Good. So that means all of my melody instruments will end up into this uh, sidechain bus still here. And then what I want to do is route this one to new output bus. And I want it to be uh, sidechain compressed. That makes sense. And then we're going to take the uh, wind sounds and run it into this compressed channel too, just like that. All right, so what I've got set up, all the strings go into a string bus. The string bus then joins the toy piano in a sidechain bus, and then that sidechain bus is going to compress both the piano sound and the wind sounds. Oops, fraps, go away. Okay, so where's that happening? Here's the sidechain bus, so that would have been everything, and that is going into the sidechain, multiband sidechain compressor, which is linked up to wind sounds, which is what I don't want anymore. I want it to be hooked up with sidechain compressed, and I'm going to go ahead and take this wind sounds, do a little bit of organization to keep yourself sane later on. It's with piano, which goes into sidechain compressed. And now we'll just take this joker and move it up here. And plug it in somewhere. No, it's not what we want. How about here? Good deal. And now that should... Pop up, and do we still have our connection? Okay, well, it did some more arranging for us, but that's fine. All right, so now the piano bit here, which as you listen through this, you'll recognize that it gets a little overpowering as it goes along.
And part of that is the sustain pedal being on it. And actually, it probably could just be using some compression itself. It seemed to be hitting between 10 and 20. So if I set it about, uh, I don't know, about 15, the threshold that is. Well, even, yeah, 17. With a mild ratio, that'll help cut down on some of that extravagance that's going on there. And then as a whole, it will be getting a little bit of compression from the other melody instruments, which should be proved by these little lights flickering on us. I just wanted in the background to create some emphasis on the chord harmony, but it doesn't need to be a focal point. Even as it's rising in volume, I don't want it to be too much. And in case you don't know how frequencies, spectrum stuff works, basically the human ear will hear whichever sound is loudest at a given frequency. So you can see as this thing's punching up towards 10, it's going to be over powering anything that's at 20 on the cello. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but we're going to go with it. And I'm not quite sure I did enough there. So I'm going to drop the threshold here, increase the ratio to about 4. Maybe we will take this back on down to about 25. Oops, not that far. The key thing I'm looking for here is being able to hear these two cello notes at the end. And I may give them a little bit more emphasis. Oops. thing I may do is hit it harder in this multi-band deal. Um, turn it on a little bit lower. Just give it a little bit more of a whack. That's better. Better enough by me. Okay, so with that done, the other thing that I wasn't quite sure about is how muddy the toy piano becomes over time in this tail end section. Um, again, we have it going into the side chain bus, so all of my parallel channels will be uh, hitting this. So if I do a special bit of EQing here, it won't be affecting the strings because obviously they're not playing during this portion of the song. So I'll just have to automate the EQ to come on during this portion. Although it's not as bad as I originally thought it was. Regardless, let's do it just to show us how to do it, right? Alright, so... That'd be this one. I don't understand what's going on here. Hold on for a second. Oh, yeah, that's one of the effects we've got going on here. At the end, the piano is getting some audiomatic and more reverb on it. I don't know if that was in the last video or not. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create an equalizer. And we're going to go ahead and automate the bypass switch. 
Let's bring it down. Can I bring it down, please? Right about there, that'll work. And I only want it on during this portion of the song. Basically want it to come on at the beginning of this. Right there. And let's go ahead and set up a loop. Like so. Now what I'll do here, I'm going to arm one of these and send up a spike. And just listen for any frequency that kind of jumps out. Well, it's not plugged in, stupid. Oh! Yeah, that'll do it every time. Alright, so I'm going to need to create a splitter here. Just like that. That'll go here. This one will go here. And we'll feed this one back into our multivan. Okay, so yeah, that was a little confusing. Naturally, we didn't hear anything with this. Alright, so I'll bring the gain down. And now we should have sound. Although, it, there it is. You know, I don't hear anything. There's a kind of sharp frequency right here. But I was more concerned in this lower range, but I guess we put high passes on everything well enough that it... I don't really think it needs it. The other thing that may need it, though, is the big piano, which is up here. And let's get to where it's super duper loud. I'm gonna run through the same procedure here. I'm going to create a equalizer. What the heck? Turn the loop on. Thank you. And arm one of the parametrics. And there you hear it. Let's narrow the Q. There he is. Pull that out. And what that does is it just, it cleans up the sound a lot. For instance, uh, oh, it's on loop. Let's just do that then. All right, so without it, here. this is what it sounds like. And then with it, you get a lot more definition in the notes. And I'm going to just sweep through it again with this. That one's pretty powerful right there. And you don't have to hit it too hard. Just enough to I don't know. Yeah, here, let's do a bypass check here. Again, without it. And then with it. A lot clearer, a lot more definition in the sound of the instrument. Okay, so we have done a lot here, and it's right at 19 minutes and 50 seconds, so... I'm going to cut this one off and go on to the next.